So my name is Laidiak. Um, I come from Palestine. Uh, I'm an architect. I studied at Birzeit University, um, which is a well-known well university in Palestine. Uh, after my studies, I worked um, in my country for three years. Um, my work involved both academia and practice, so I worked um, in an architectural firm for three years and uh, meanwhile as I was working um, as like in, in academia like as a part-time uh, junior lecturer or teaching assistant then I pursued my master's uh, at UCD um, in 2021 and in September 2022 I finished and now I just started working as a practicing architect and mainly my uh, master's uh, thesis um, um, was focused on um, community resilience um, in order to um, uh, create more resilient societies against climate injustice especially and social injustices worldwide and therefore um, the the example or like the case study of Musa Alami which is the Mashru' or the Arab Development Society uh, was um, very inspiring to understand how um, alternative socioeconomic systems can work in areas of um, uh, social injustices and in uh, areas of uh, climate injustices, which is a thing or like a catastrophe that is happening in many um, regions worldwide. And so, so therefore, this historical study that I did uh, would be maybe a starting point um, as a lessons learned from uh, past cases and how we can uh, rethink our current uh, structure and way of living and our relationships with each other in order to create uh, further social cohesion and yeah well, I am Palestinian so yeah I'm, I'm deeply connected to Palestine one way or another because um, I, I was born there I was raised there I'm, I'm like Palestinian in blood. Uh, my parents uh, were born and and uh, they were raised in Palestine. My mom <clears throat> comes from. Um, she's originally a refugee. She comes from um, a village from the north of Palestine. And my dad is a Bethlehemite. He comes from Bethlehem, and I was born and raised in Bethlehem. So yeah. So I first encountered it uh, through one of my design projects um, when I was doing my bachelor's in architecture. Uh, we were um, <clears throat> um, uh, we were uh, required or requested to design a boarding school for um, kids uh, in this um, place called the Arab Development Society. Like we had, I had personally before that I had no idea about this project. I only know that. Um, it was the kind of a factory that produced yogurt and, and good stuff, uh, but I did not know anything about the history of this project. So, yeah, my when I started learning more and more about it during my design process itself, I was very inspired by it. And like, I never, and even I was like very happy with the outcome of the design itself because it was really based on um, like the needs of, of the community and it really kind of resonates with the people there so the architecture that was even proposed and and that was really encouraged by our tutor at that time uh, was really an architecture for people and by people as well uh, but um, I, I like never I never forgot about the project so like after years um, I went to UCD and like uh, one of um, the courses really dealt with community resilience and community cooperatives and like honestly this is what happened so like I, I totally remembered that our development site was a cooperative structure so this struck me because at the moment in Ireland and Scotland and a couple of European countries but especially Ireland and Scotland they're trying to um, revive the, um, vacant towns through the ideology of cooperatives which is like the ownership and development of um, regions like uh, villages or neighborhoods by people uh, so it's kind of like community ownership of um, energy of public transportation and all this stuff um, in order to give people uh, the ability to control uh, their future as well so this when when um, we were like learning and discussing about all the stuff i just randomly suggested this and uh, this uh, example that i had which is the Arab development society to my uh, instructor and he really encouraged me just to continue working on it and therefore this was my uh, thesis in the end
Um, well, I didn't. Uh, well, uh, now I can like answer it uh, from two different experiences. The first experience that I had as an architect trying to design the school, I did not have any expectation about it, but I was just really interested with what I was finding. But if you would ask me this question like a couple of months before, I really had this like very um, positive, uh, extremely positive. Um, a viewpoint of uh, the Al Mashru or the Al Development Society. I thought that okay, this was a solution for um, community resilience against injustices worldwide and all this stuff. But I, I wasn't critical about it at all. But then I really enjoyed um, the this uh, archival analysis because it really it, it really struck me with so many stuff. So it wasn't like pure white and beautiful community that was uh, thriving there. It was like it existed in a situation that is filled with conflicts and therefore the, the, the project itself was controversial so uh, it was filled with surprises but I can assure you that I started from like having a very kind of white image kind of like okay this is the hope for social uh, for um, uh, resilience and um, to social injustices worldwide this was like my main kind of uh, idea but then yeah when i was uh, studying it like i yeah i really discovered the, the controversy of everything so like in general i was finding out like whenever some um whenever like someone would be aiming to i don't know alleviate the social conditions of certain people um i don't know perhaps uh, different political and social layers would intervene and therefore would not deliver um, the, the ideals as as imagined and therefore yeah you would always see something com coming up and down so it's never like something linear and going towards perfection it's always like ups and downs but at least we can learn from our past so yeah this was my this is my general conclusion towards this project or like the before and after um, again, when I first visited it, I, I did not have an exact idea what I'm, of what I'm gonna have, uh, what, uh, of what I'm gonna see. But uh, in general, I was really like all of us were really um, like at least happy or pleased to see a vernacular architecture there, an architecture that was really adapting to the to the environment there because uh, it was mostly constructed from mud brick, um, and uh, the way that well. I couldn't see that. Um, I, I couldn't say that it resonates with the village because it's very linear. But uh, the scale of the architecture there is uh, kind of more humane to um, city development in general. Um, but yeah, in, in a way or another, like I can say that that the, the, the materiality used there was really encouraging for us to rethink uh, vernacular architecture and actually. You can say that in Jericho, <clears throat> and most probably you would know that there are many experiments going on at the moment as well, like by some architectural studios, um, progressive architectural studios like Shams Ard, uh, that are trying to um, uh, create architecture or like design architecture inspired by or um, using uh, the, the, the substances or the materials found in that environment, which makes it more um, less uh, energy in intensive and more environmentally friendly. So architecture wise, this is what I can say. I can say the houses. Uh, yeah, I can see the houses and um, the way that certain houses were, um, uh, the, the configuration of certain houses um, uh, with each other, like they were kind of creating courtyards, especially that we were trying to just understand how the previous houses were constructed before um, the demolition of 1967 and the demolition of 1940s, no, I mean 1950s. Um, some of the houses were constructed in courtyard structures that, um, 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 within each other, which made it kind of resembling, um, not, not exactly, but it had some sort of resonance with um, the courtyard architecture that is really um, environmentally adapting to the, the 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 weather and the climate there is in Jericho, which is known as that, which is known of a, like really hot and arid climate. So and and like this was also like a point of um, not inspiration, but it was like the base of many of our architecture projects or of our proposals as like an, um, a design team um, when we were like doing our uh, <clears throat> proposals for the school. 
Um, so yeah, I can say that the materiality and the configuration of the architecture element of of the of these housing structures were kind of very um, inspiring for us as a starting point for the school. The, the, this might be a bit contradicting to what I said before regarding the housing structures in general, because the housing structures were kind of um, approaching towards this uh, courtyard um, configuration. But when when you look at the general master plan, you feel that it's very, it is very rigid and very modernist in its way in its configuration itself. Uh, and if I would remember just walking through the whole project itself, uh, it kind of gives you a cold feeling. Um, some of the structures are really distant from each other, so again, controversially, in contradiction to what I said before, in general, the different structures were very distant from each other, what I remember, based on what I remember, especially the West, especially the West um, wing, as you say, or uh, as you can say, or like the West part of the whole, um, uh, of the whole village, or of the whole project, because this was the part that we really focused on. Um, so yeah, it 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 would really it would really align with like the some current modernist maybe like kind of suburbs uh, that you can see say at the moment. But again, um, this is talking about in a macro scale. But then um, there was like a certain like there was like some certain additions that the project had before its demolition between the houses not on a macro scale but then when you look at the housing configurations with each other based on what i remember they had this kind of um a courtyard approach that we really were inspired by but in general yeah i really remember that it, it, it gave you a cold feeling it's not as warm as like any village that you would uh, visit like any Palestinian village um it, it does not give you that intimate feeling in a way or another like um yeah this yeah but it, it it kind of gives you more of a suburban um, a, a suburban feeling yeah this is what i can say about my my visit which was like maybe uh, seven years ago or something like that Um, again, because my 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 thesis did not extend beyond nineteen <clears throat> beyond nineteen sixty seven, um, but based on my knowledge and my visit, uh, like as an example, the the student accommodation, this radial building is now inhabited by I think YWCA, which is um, I think it was a girls' institution. I can't I can't remember. I can, but I think so. But this institution used like um, is currently producing like uh, pastries and stuff like that. So it is kind of a small business, uh, and their products are like sold in the city of Jericho as well. Um, there were some people living like in in what uh, uh, in in some of the houses, but most of them are like vacant. The school is vacant. The stone building is vacant as well. Um, uh, that's pretty much, and I just remember like the the um, the structure that and the the structure that is in the very center of the project where they uh, store and sell uh, the yogurt or no they don't sell the yogurt there or or the dairy products they just um, uh, they store it there but they just uh, invited us over in that place and they just gave us uh, some food and uh, whatsoever but yeah this is what this was the thing that I remember most. Uh, other than that, like the 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 east part of the project was like like even regarding like cultivation and stuff like most of the lands were 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 left without cultivation. Again, we can say that the aridity of that area and at the moment uh, the problem of the water scarcity because of uh, Israel and because of climate change exacerbated by Israel again um, is making it more and more difficult uh, for cultivation to happen um, and more expensive. Yeah, yeah. As uh, as I said, a um, uh, few houses were um, at the moment occupied by by families, and um, yeah, again the the, the radial school, um, the radial residential building, 
and uh, that building that I remember was in the like the center of the project that it was used like as a storage and some kind of offices as well for uh, for the administration of the Arab Development Society. The pedagogy and on the alternative socioeconomic system that Musa Alami was was uh, thinking about. Um, this communal way of thinking rather than the individualistic one, it might be one of the key, so it is not the silver bullet solution, but it's kind of most, the most essential approach for Palestinians and people worldwide um, to approach climate injustice at the moment or and social injustices and climate action in general as well. So knowing that um, uh, that area was very arid with communal effort they were able to find water and they started cultivating the land so although now we live in, in, in water scarcity again due to Israeli occupation exacerbated by climate change we can find a way there if, if, we, if we think communally on the scale of the, of the municipality at least within each city uh, we can think of a way to gather water communally and to 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 cultivate our lands and to sustain our livelihood and this was like the many approach that Musa Almi was was uh, taking and this approach is general uh, like in general is found in many um, communities worldwide like villagers used to live in a communal area but or in a communal uh, economic system but nowhere or another it was clan based but now living in like our current situation uh, the situation calls us like in order to to live in a more um, you can say communal way, despite um, the the clan, despite your origins, despite whatever. And this also this need enhances the diversity and inclusivity of 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 communities to live with each other. So it has really it 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 has different strengths that would not only um, help approach climate action or mitigate climate change, but it would also. Um, help us rethink our current individualistic and capitalist system in which like one person would just uh, um, control or, or decide the fate of, of, of other people or decide uh, how these resources would be used. And like um, knowing as well that um, the amount of water or rain, um, the amount of rainfall in uh, Palestine and Ramallah especially um, is very much equivalent to many European countries in um, especially like um, England, which is not European, especially in London, um, which was a study that was made by um, a scholar. I can't recall her name, but I can send you the the article. But the difference is that in Palestine, the water falls only in winter, makes it like, um, and therefore like a huge amount of waterfall would be uh, uh, within a couple of months. But this would require us um, to communally think about how we can use this water rather than letting it drain and going, uh, letting it like, go underground and letting it become groundwater and then Israel would take it. So maybe we can maybe create communal water collection system or catchment systems um, that would help us, I don't know, collect water communally, but like in general, it is all based on um, a communal way of thinking, thinking of the good for all rather than the good for one person on the expenses of uh, the livelihoods of other people. And this is what um, our ancestors lived. Um, and this is what kind of Musa Alami had in mind, despite the controversies that happened. Um, and yeah, again, uh, the story of Arab Society is not like pure white uh, fairy tale. It is uh, filled with controversies, uh, controversies, but it's good to see the, uh, the 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 powerful points or the turning points that Musa Alami had in his project. But I can just briefly say, uh, first of all, as we said, water is a huge issue, which um, um, in which like Jordan, is, uh, which Jordan Valley in general is suffering from at the moment, especially the um, the, the water basins, which are being depleted on and on by Israel. Second of all, um, uh, a huge part of the land was confiscated by um, by Israel as well. So this is another um, problem that uh, the Arab society is facing. Third of all, I'm not sure about the amount of funding that that Arab society is getting from um, the Palestinian Authority, which is the third problem as well. I, I'm not very knowledgeable about the current situation because, again, my thesis just ended on um, on 1967. But I did hover over some of the articles or read some of the articles 
um, newspaper articles as uh, actually that was talking about the, the challenges of, of the Arab development society in uh, getting aid uh, or support from the current Palestinian authority. Um, and um, like the problem is that at the moment, at the moment, uh, the whole social economic system of Palestine is mostly um, dependent on the international market and let's say on the Israeli market mostly. Um, so in, in, in a way or another, we gradually became more and more dependent on the Israeli market. And at the same time, um, we all as youth people are just focusing on certain um on certain economic fields such as just engineering, uh, medicine, uh, what else, law, and that's it. So no one would think of maybe uh, working as like a farmer, which would be which can be really lucrative at the moment because we're really having scarcity of people who are knowledgeable about uh, the agriculture and knowledgeable about the um, the the old methods or the, the, the traditional methods that our um, ancestors used to use uh, in in these arid climates and therefore this is a major problem is that like we are losing more and more uh, the know-how in cultivating these land because they were really um the uh, like kind of our grandparents and our great grandparents were using different techniques in order to adapt with uh, with the cultivation arid lands and the more we neglect them, the more we will lose our know-how in them. And therefore, that would be another challenge for us to understand how we'd be able to deal with these lands other than the, in, I mean, in a different way than the, the, the extremely intensive way of agriculture and cultivation, because this in itself was a major problem in depleting the lands uh, because the modernist agricultural system I'm not saying that we, we just have to go back to the traditional methods, but maybe thinking of a hybrid way uh, to match between the modernist agricultural systems and um, the, uh, the old methods and in a social, different social economic system that would not uh, put profit and uh, ex uh, resource exploitation and exporting as a priority, but putting the, but in different system that would put uh, the, the social welfare of its people first then a combination of the, of these three things might end up in a different socioeconomic structure and a technique of cultivating the land that will sustain our livelihoods, um, first of all, and then think of economical nourishment more and more and more. The, the, the neoliberal capitalist system at the moment is also creating more and more climate change in Palestine and elsewhere and making us less dependent on us on, on ourselves and making us more and more dependent on the international market and therefore more and more forgetting our own culture, cultivation methods, different socioeconomic structure and all these things. So they're very interweaving. And again, technology can't work without technolo like technological change and social change are inevitable um, for climate, um, for, uh, like to mitigate, for mitigation and, and adaptation in this era of climate change as well. This is interesting. <laughs> I do I do hope that it would be used maybe as an experimental hub for radical thoughts of different um, economic systems and maybe for people who just kind of volunteer and try to live in different economic conditions for a couple of months. That would maybe give us the opportunity to find like kind of a space to think of an alternative with having the ability um, with having like the, the opportunity to go back to our normal lives if we want. So it is kind of, I, I would really love to see it as like kind of an ex um, a huge experimental area which you can go and just experiment an alternative, uh, an, yeah, an alternative way of living. So that can be very interesting. Um, again, I'll focus on really like, re like, like using this, uh, like this land that we still have, um, like just to try other socioeconomic systems and um, different agricultural methods that would, and also a, a hub for education as well, for a different, um, different mindset 
a more like investigative mindset, a more um out of the norm mindset. So yeah, as I told you, like it can be like a hub for just experimentation for um alternative for an alternative world. Um a small minimum alternative world that is just trying to maybe create something that's out of the norm. Um I don't know what that can be. Maybe it's like too dreamy or too cliche, but um it can it can be something different. It was something different and very radical at that time. So it can still be something different, at least maybe on the level of education, at least. Um I, I would really see it as a place in which uh, we can create a different educational system uh, and therefore come up with like people like in, in a different educational system that would be able to um, nourish the children and um, help them find themselves more and understand their abilities and the other hobbies and the other gifts that they have other than just mere uh, engineering or or uh, or law or whatsoever so yeah it might be something radical and alternative I don't know.